Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to the Fire Pit. I'm Josh, British name Reginald, and welcome. This is perfect timing. We've just wrapped our marathon to Pound Town, and uh, tonight we meet to map out our next journey. That's right. Selection section number 12, or as this episode is premiering on Super Tuesday for the U.S., this is election section 12. Election selection. What's your connection? Elec- elec- electing and representing. The please, best list please, for please, this please, upcoming journey. Please, please do what's written, please. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So that's right. Election section 12 is here. And you know the reason I say is for great timing is that for this month, by the time you've listened to it, it's already been a few weeks now, we are the featured podcast on our host, Podbean. So hopefully some of you guys listening are our new listeners that have came in on the past month or so. So before we uh, reveal where we're going from Rocky... I'm going to go ahead and have Dan recap some rules and guidelines that makes our podcast unique to those other movie review podcasts. So this is he'll explain what's going to happen over the next journey that we have here. So without further delay, Nigel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Josh. Dan here, British name Nigel. And yes, welcome new listeners and returning friends. Our audience loves our movie reviews and watchings, but they really seem to love these episodes. Seriously, ever since we started way back in Selection Section 1, we've got nothing but positive feedback for these episodes. They love Selection Section. I guess they love hearing us fight and argue over which uh, how we're going to get to our next destination. But um, before that, uh, I'd like to explain or re-explain how our podcast works. We pick a destination movie every six weeks and spend six weeks working towards that destination through other movies linking an actor or actress in each film. Uh, All of our movies link all the way back to our very first episode, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. And actually, they even link to our prototype episodes, episodes that we didn't record, but uh, link back before Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. So, for example, we just wrapped up Rocky, and we'll be taking someone from that movie to start this next journey. And before we reveal the destination, just a quick, like how we do it is we have rule. We have other rules too. We can't use the same actor or actors twice in the same journey. So if, uh, for example, someone uses Sylvester Stallone to get out of Rocky, they can't use Sylvester Stallone again in the journey. It doesn't mean Sylvester Stallone can't appear in the same or not the same movie uh, in the same journey, but he can't be used as a connector for any other journey for at least six more weeks after being used in, uh, to get out of Rocky. That's just an example. I don't know. We haven't done lists yet, so I don't know who's going to use Sylvester Stallone or whoever. And then the other rule is we can't use the same actor we use to get into a destination film. So uh, the example here is, again, Rocky. We used Joe Spinell to get into Rocky from Taxi Driver. We're not going to use Joe Spinell to get out of Rocky. You know, the only exception to this rule was made way back in the Whistle Stop campaign trail. Uh, because uh, we had we did um, Mr. Smith goes to Washington and uh, we had to use Jimmy Stewart twice, mostly because everybody else in that movie was dead by 1955. So we had to kind of use him to get out of Mr. Smith so we can keep this podcast going. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this episode. We would pack it in, boys. It's over. So yeah, we would still be trying to get out of the 30s. Yeah. Yes. Also, we did Whoopsie Daisy with uh, Gene Hackman. Yes, uh, we, we did. We, yeah, um, I can't remember. We he, we used him for Hoosiers, and then we used him for another film. I'm trying to remember. Well, we used Quick him to. Dead. We used him. We used him to get into into Superman from Quick and the Dead, and then we used him to get out of Superman to get into Hoosiers, and that was our bad. We didn't. Uh, we, of course, that rule wasn't fully established. It was established after that episode. We're like, ooh, that was a bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Sour grapes that turned into wine. I mean, we got to see Hoosiers. So, and a happy yeah. accident. Yeah, like I said, it, it worked out in the end. But we we worked. We try to enforce the rule. And then the only other rule we have for ourselves is when we're gonna we're gonna present our lists here in a little bit. We try to have at least a movie or two on our list that we personally haven't seen. So when I present a list, I'll try to have a movie or two on my list that I haven't seen. Tom, I thought it was yeah. Josh. For me, I always hold to the rule two movies. Yeah, two it's movies usually on the two, list. Yeah, I yeah. Seen. It's been two since we've started the rule, but um, the original rule was a movie or two. But we, the three of us, have been really good about doing at least two. So that's. 
pretty much it for the rules. It's kind of an interesting take on a podcast. Uh, there's a lot of movie review podcasts out there, but none of them use this system of uh, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of system. But Kevin Bacon's not our end game. In fact, the year or so we've been doing this, uh, we've only actually gotten to one Kevin Bacon film. It's not really a Kevin Bacon film. And we didn't use him as a connector. So we prove that there is a six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but it is not an absolute rule. So, with the rules out of the way, uh, to tell us where we're heading next, and also because I'm about to cough again, I'll send it over to Tom. Well, thank you, Dan. Thompson here, American name Tom, and again, an amazing explanation of this amazing podcast. Yes, we are here, as Josh said, it's election selection section, we pick our connection. Erection. Now, one last... Sorry. One last rule... <laughs> the three of us are going to present no more than three lists apiece to path out to our next destination. And where is that destination? Josh, do you do you, do you know where we put our destination? Our final journey of season two? I don't know, but uh, we, sh we should definitely sandwich it. Yes. Well, we've really had a go at this season, if you hadn't noticed. We've been struck back, struck out. We went on an adventure, we vacationed across space-time, we marathoned the distance, and now, now we venture into the true unknown, the great beyond, the afterlife. boo For the first time in the fire pit's history, we're heading to a movie due in theaters, and all the challenges that will entail, oh Boy, we started with a sequel to Ghostbusters, and now we're ending this season on the sequel to the sequel of Ghostbusters in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now the destination is set, but we need to figure out the journey. So each of us will present a list, round robin style. Then after no more than three lists are presented, we'll debate the lists until one is crowned the winner. We start with all the lists and then we whittle it down to the ones we like the most and then we whittle it down to those that we like the most or the most and then we piss off a friend by kicking them out, then it's down to two and then those two duke it out Thunderdome style until only one remains. And then we don't talk for a week until we're ready to record our next episode. And repeat every six weeks. And since yeah. I won the last go around, I'll be presenting last. So, Josh, we'll start with you. Yay. Now, I do want to say one final thing. Since um, this is our first movie that has not been released yet, we basically looked at the credits for Ghostbusters Afterlife. And we are only linking to that movie using actors or actresses that are in both Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters Afterlife. So, like, Finn Wolfhard, we're not going to be using him as a connector into Ghostbusters Afterlife. Because in the event that Sony decides to delay the film again, because it was recently delayed, only by two weeks, but it was delayed, will leave us the option to hot swap in Ghostbusters. Yeah, mm. although I think the likelihood of that getting delayed again is getting slim, because they just released, like, trailer number three yesterday, so... Yeah, so we don't think it's going to happen at this point, but back when we planned this out, because you keep in mind, we plan these things out, like, almost a year in advance, so we've had this planned out for at least six months. Originally, it was going to be Space Jam. We were going to slam. Be glad we changed our mind. Well, there will be other times to slam. There will be other times to slam, but we... We, we decided to go with Ghostbusters Afterlife, especially after they delayed it to November. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, we'll be able to hot swap it out in the event they delay it. But like I said, we don't think that's likely. But anywho, on to the first list. All right. So, there is a theme to the naming of all of my lists. You'll be able to figure it out here in a minute. But uh, I think I've got three good lists. My first list is called uh, Cats and Dogs Living Together Mass Hysteria. <laughs> so, the theme is like odd pairs or crazy situations. Okay. But first, we're going to get out of Rocky via Sylvester Stallone. That's another common theme on my lists. We're going to go to Get Carter, the 2000 cop thing film by uh, Sylvester Stallone. I'm worried this one will be the slog. But from Get Carter, we are going to follow Rona Mitra into the 2008 film Doomsday. It's like Mad Max meets 2020. It's Mad oh. Max in Scotland. Yes. Josh, 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 you said before we started this that you had three good lists. 
So far, you are a liar. Well, let me get to the rest of my lists. Because this these are the two movies that... Uh, I, I The next three movies, I am super excited to watch. The first two, you'd, we'd have to slog through. Because we follow David O'Hara from Doomsday to the 2006 film The Departed. Mm. Okay. 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 You got me back. You got me back. You got me okay. back. Now, from The Departed, we follow Leonardo DiCaprio to the 2010 film Shutter Island. Okay. A good horror film. And from Shutter Island, we follow Ted Levine to the 2001 film Evolution. Oh, oh, is that the one with David Duchovny? Yep. I didn't know he was in that film. Oh, I love that film. Ted Levine is one of the generals in that film. I love, love that movie, which is also an Ivan Reitman film. That's right. Okay. But from uh, Evolution, we follow Dan Aykroyd to Ghostbusters Afterlife. I forgot he was in that film, too. Okay. 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 Like I said, the first three, like I had, like, the problem was, is I found, like, after we watched uh, Taxi Driver, you guys mentioned The Departed. I'm like, oh, my God, I want to watch that movie again. So it's like I started building a list around it. But the problem was is after I saw Taxi Driver and Shutter Island and then Evolution, I'm like, oh, no, no, I got to do this. I got to find two movies starting out that I hadn't seen, and I've got to do one through Sylvester Stallone. Okay. So, unfortunately, the first two movies are going to be kind of rough. Um, but I think the rest make up for it. Yeah. Interesting start. I'm not going to lie. Dan, any additional thoughts about Josh's first list before I turn things over to you? No, I'll wait. I'll wait till we get to debating the list before I give my actual opinion of it. But yeah, the first two movies are definitely a slog. But he did hook me back with The Departed. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If I got to get Carter is not great. And Doomsday is, well, it's Mad Max in Scotland. But I mean, if I got to get through those two movies to get to The Departed, which I've never seen, but I've always wanted to. Such a good film. I have not seen it, but it might be like heat for uh, this journey. Like it's one I really want to see. So that might tip me. But no, that's all I got to say. Okay. Well, Dan, I think you're up then. Okay. So uh, this one I call, it's not the destination. It's the journey. A apt title. Most of these movies, the destination uh, isn't what they wanted, uh, but the journey of the movie itself makes it entertaining. So, from Rocky, we take Sylvester Stallone to Demolition Man. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I remember us talking about this a while ago. From Demolition Man, we take Bill Cobb to A Mighty Wind. Ooh. Isn't that the uh, improv movie? Kind of, sort of, yeah. I've never seen it before, but yeah, I think it is. From A Mighty Wind, in the same genre, with the same director, we take Christopher Guest to Waiting for Guffman. Okay, Dan. Okay. Not familiar with that film. Oh, it's. Uh, I have not seen that. Not seen. Go never on. seen it. Never seen it. But okay. Ooh. Okay. Go on. Uh, from Waiting for Guffman, we take Eugene Levy to National Lampoon's Vacation. National Lampoon Vacation. Yeah, Vacation. We could technically because use any of the Vacation films because I needed this actor for it. From Vacation, we take. Chevy Chase to Caddyshack. Ah. Mm -hmm. And from Caddyshack, we take Bill Murray to Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay. okay. I know like two of those movies. I know all of these movies. Yeah, Waiting for Guffman and Mighty Wind, Nigel. Those are some, I would not Mighty have expected Wind, those. Mighty like from the Best in Show guy, right? Like, yes. That stars, uh, was it Pat Willard, um, Eugene Levy, yes. Stifler's mom? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be kind of like a musical documentary, but it's not a documentary. It's a mockumentary, so it's it's not mm -hmm. real. Well, most of those are built like that, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not like um, um, Spinal Tap either. I'm going to take myself self back because I want to talk about how excited I am for those two films. So not bad. Interesting starter list, Nigel. So I think uh, it's my turn now, isn't it? Yes, sir. That it are. All right. Well, this one I'm tentatively calling the horror sampler. And just a spoiler, I did break one of our rules because I did have three lists, but this first list had too many similar movies. It's like, no, no. So I am using someone who was not in ghostbusters the original as the destination person so uh, count that as a negative as we vote on these going forward I'll, I'll take this is not my number one list so i will take that negative points as we vote but for this movie we take 
Talia Shire into the Dunwich Horror, uh, okay. based on the um, H.P. Lovecraft novel. I, I think it was 1970s one this film was. Never heard of it either. I never knew they made this. But we take from that film Michael Fox, not Michael J. Fox, but Michael Fox into the very twisted film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, which is a very creepy film. It's about a former child actress who grows up and is absolutely insane. Yeah, it's fucked up. This lady be fucked up. Well, from there, flashbacks to lists that Tom presented in season one, Dan. Yes, I know. We've we've come full circle. Yeah, but yeah, fr- keep going. But f- from for new listeners, this is what I have to deal with every selection section. But from whatever happened to Baby Jane, we take Dave Wilcock to now. You see him now. You don't. A Disney comedy, if I'm not mistaken, back when Kurt Russell was still a teen actor for Disney. And it stars Kurt Russell. And from there, we take Kurt Russell to The Hateful Eight. That's your favorite film. That's a lie. But Jennifer Jason Leigh was in The Hateful Eight. And we take her into Amityville, The Awakening, the 2017 movie. And from The Awakening, we take McKenna Grace to Ghostbusters Afterlife. So again, already negative points going against it because I used a non-Ghostbusters original actor slash actress to get there. And from the reactions I've gotten on the rest of these, I'm thinking maybe it wasn't really going to get much of uh, many points with anyone anyways. I will tell you this much, Tom. That's definitely a list. Yeah, of all the lists you've presented over the year, that's definitely one of them. Well, again, I'll talk more about these films uh, to try to sell this list to you if you so feel keen on it. But it's my first list, and following trends, it's not necessarily the best list or my favorite list. But I, I like some of those movies on this list. Oh, round one down. I bet I think we go back up to you, Josh. What's uh, list number two for you? List number two for me. So uh, I'm going to tell you the title of this one, and I want you guys to tell me the themes I have for all of my titles. The title for this list is When Someone Asks If You're a God. Oh, God. You say, no, but my friend Tom is. Well, I'm just using quotes from the Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters film. Oh, I never would have guessed that. Oh, sarcasm. Yeah. Okay. But um, you guys will like the theme for this one. Maybe not all the movies, but definitely the theme. So from Rocky, we follow Sylvester Stallone to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, where they fight a planet god. Oh, okay. I just see why you're going with that. So from... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we follow Kurt Russell to the movie where they go and they fight a god, Stargate. Okay, wow. Okay, okay. From Stargate, we follow, and I'm going to, I love this guy, but I can never pronounce his name, but. Digimon Hanso. Digimon Hanso. See, I told you I could say it, right? Digimon Hanso. I didn't know if the D was pronounced or not. To uh, the movie where they have to get something of the gods. Pandora's box in Laura Croft Tomb Raider, the Cradle of Life. Oof. Yeah, that's gonna be that's the only Oof. way I could link these two movies. Is that the latest one that no 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 no, no, no no sequel to the Angelina Jolie ones? Oh oh, is this a sequel one? Yeah yeah, oh. no, it doesn't look too. But I've actually never follow, seen that one. I've seen the first one though. I, see, that's I haven't seen that one either. Like, there's only two films on this <laughs> one that I hadn't seen. But uh, from that movie, we follow Gerard Butler. Dude, Dan's going to love this one. The movie about gods of Egypt. Gods of Egypt. That's my favorite historical documentary of all time. <laughs> See what I'm saying? He loves that movie. So, But from Gods of Egypt, we follow Chadwick Boseman to the movie about the god father of soul, James Brown, in Get On Up. I don't think I've heard of that one. I hadn't either, but he came out with it. Uh, it's another biographical drama that came out after um, 42 okay. or before. After. But anywho, from Get On Up, we follow Dan Aykroyd to Ghostbusters Afterlife, where they bust ghosts and fight a god. Okay. I've got thoughts on this list, too. I knew this would be your favorite, Tom. Yes. You're absolutely right. Of all the lists you've ever presented, this definitely stands out on top. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> Dan, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> uh, it's it's honestly not bad outside of Laura Croft, Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. My God, the, I, I got stuck because I could I wanted to get Stargate, and then when I saw Gods of Egypt, I'm like, that's my theme. Yeah, Gods of Egypt is an awful film, <laughs> but it is awful. <laughs> But it is my favorite historical documentary of all time. But uh, uh, that'll be a good episode. That'll definitely be like, that'll be like The Mummy. Honestly, Laura Croft Tomb Raider is the one movie on that list. And I'm just like, oh, no. But and I've never even be... heard of Get On Up. Yeah, yeah, me either. But I think the Laura Croft and Gods of Egypt be two great episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just not great watch sections. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> saving my thoughts for, yeah, because yeah. I could go on for a while. Oof. But, uh, Nigel, save the day. Okay, this one's called... Actually, I don't have a theme for this one yet. The... If you hadn't already just figured it out, Nigel's not feeling too well tonight. I don't really have a theme for this one, because, well, the movies do kind of follow a theme of... Actually, yeah, they, they, have, they follow a theme of uh, trading places. So, from... So we'll, we'll call it the trading places list? I guess. Uh, for Carl Weathers, or I mean, sorry, from Rocky, we take Carl Weathers to Predator. Ooh, good start. From Predator, we take Bill Duke to a movie that we were dying to see a couple journeys ago, Commando. Nice. <sighs> From Commando, we take Dan Hedaya to Maverick. The um, um, the poker one. The poker one with oh, uh, Mel Gibson yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. James Garner. Yeah, that's the yeah the poker. Yeah, not Maverick, the new Top Gun sequel that hasn't come out yet. No, Maverick, the the poker movie. And the okay. Western. I like that movie. That's a good one. Okay. From Maverick, we take James Garner to The Distinguished Gentleman. See in that one? What's that's that? the one with Richard Gere, right? I think so, yes. No, that's the one with um uh, but maybe Richard Gere was in it, but it's definitely got um um oh oh shoot. Um, no, I'm thinking an officer and a gentleman. Yeah, it's Axel Foley's in it. Um Bill Murray, not Bill Murray, but um Eddie Murphy. Ed- Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Jesus Eddie God. Eddie Murphy. Speaking of Eddie Murphy. Oh, that was the one that's uh he's a uh, he got selected he gets elected to Congress because he got the same name as the uh, incumbent. Yeah. Or the guy that died or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And speaking of Eddie Murphy, we take Eddie Murphy to Trading Places. Yeah. And from Trading Places, we take Dan Aykroyd to Ghostbusters Afterlife. Good choices. All these lists. For new listeners, Dan almost always, with his second list, just out of nowhere, just will throw a heater and just like knocks my my feet off my feet. Because that's the thing that can happen with feet. So this is a good list. I'm sure your other list will be just fine, Josh. You, you still got one more left. Coming from you, that's hardly an insult. <laughs> Fuck you too, buddy. <laughs> I think my only thing I don't like about that list is I've seen every one of those movies. Oh, uh, I have never seen Maverick. I have never seen The Distinguished Gentleman. I love Maverick, and I've seen Distinguished Gentleman. And it's been <laughs> ages since I've seen Trading Places. My dad was still alive when I last time I saw Trading Places, so it's been ages since I've seen that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, again, solid list, solid list. I'll, I'll save my opinions for... Um, when we start voting, but buckle up, fellas, because it's list number two for me, and get ready for terror, which is the name of my list. And this list, we start. Is that our reactions to your list? Is that what it's going to be? Yeah. Is Sorry. it because it's terrible? De- well, depends, because we're t- going to take Stan Shaw and to Monster Squad. He's right. It's going to be a terror for us. The 1980s classic film Monster Squad with Dracula fighting Frankenstein, who is played by Tom Noonan, Frankenstein, in Monster Squad, who we will then take to the 1980s adaptation and the start of the Hannibal Lecter series, unofficially, Manhunter, which was directed by Michael Mann. Talked about that when we watched a movie on this past journey. Heat. Heat. I knew that. I was testing you guys. Good job. You passed. (laughs) And from Manhunter, we take Stephen Lang into the, I th- think this was what, 2014, 2017, this film? Don't, Avatar. God, no. Don't Breathe, which is about this uh, the, the movie that takes place in Detroit where a bunch of people break into this old guy's house who's blind, but turns out he's more than what he seems. Um, and from Don't Breathe, we take Jan Levy into the 2013 version of Evil Dead. And from Evil Dead, we take Bob Dorian 
into Curse of the Jade Scorpion, which is... Uh, these are movies? These or are, are you just reading off of a uh, Chinese menu? These are okay. movies. This is a... Well, this is a... <laughs> This isn't a classic film. This this film kind of bombed, but I've never seen it. And from Curse of the Jade Scorpion, we take Dan Aykroyd into Ghostbusters Afterlife. Almost all of these films, um, much like the last one, deal with horror of some kind. The last one had horror of like, you know, you're stuck with a crazy person. You, of course, H.P. Lovecraft. This one, of course, Monster Squad, Manhunter, uh, Don't Breathe, when, you know, you know, all stuck with serial killers and Manhunter and Don't Breathe. Uh, Evil Dead, of course, Evil Dead. Curse of the Jade Scorpion's the only one that doesn't fit because I needed that to get to Ghostbusters Afterlife. But it's a really bad film from what the IMDb tells me. So I guess the horror of that one is it's a bad film and a 90s romantic comedy-ish. I will give you this though, Tom. You always present lists where like most of the movies I have not seen. Yeah. And yeah. on this... This one might be a slight disqualifier, though, because I have not seen Curse of the Jade Scorpion and I have not seen Ghostbusters Afterlife, but I have seen every other one. And I don't know if we're going to count uh, the destination in this. So this might be instant disqualification for me just because I don't have two that aren't the destination. See, I never count the uh, destination film in it, even if I hadn't seen it. OK, I want to say I like I'd have to go back and listen to a select, I selection. Do. I count the destination. If I haven't seen it, I count the destination film. See, I don't, I don't think I count it on movies I haven't seen. I always try to do at least two. Yeah. So. I know when I was doing movies I'd, in this one, I'd always, I did at least two movies. Mm -hmm. um, and I never counted Ghostbusters Afterlife. But again, again, it's one of those loose rules that I wouldn't enforce on either one of you. So if those are the only two films that you haven't seen, I'll allow it. Yeah, again, if I'm, I'm willing to take the... Um, Take the red then flag it's a, because it's know. done. Both your lists are out because you violated rules. Just delete them off of the uh, the script here. Okay. <laughs> Sad peanuts music. All right, so we're moving along now. Wow, this is some of the fastest we've ever done in this part of this uh, these episodes. I'm impressed. Well, Dan's just, sick. Yeah, Dan's. And, uh, I'm sick, so I'm not as talkative as I normally am. Probably yeah. to the benefit of Josh. <laughs> Josh. Josh is normally the one that has to curtail me and say, "Dan, Dan, Dan, just present your list first, and then we'll talk about the movies later." And I'm always like, "Okay." Right now, I'm just kind of like, "Let's just get through this." I want to go back <laughs> to bed. Yeah. Normally, Dan will, so, will will comment on every movie you say, and you're like, "Dan, l l please let me finish." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So obviously, sick Dan benefits healthy Josh. <laughs> and now comes the final round, which is normally where Josh brings his A game. So, Josh, please tell right. me you brought your A game. I hope I brought my A game. I uh, on this list, I have not seen. Was it not in including Ghostbusters Afterlife? I have not seen four movies, and I've only got one movie on there that I'm iffy on. Okay, but um, there's one movie I really want to see that I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So. If we went with any lists, this would be my pick. I call this list, if there's a steady paycheck in it. I'll believe anything you say. <laughs> yeah. Basically, the list is about, you know, jobs and uh, how you work those jobs. So, from Rocky, we follow Sylvester Stallone to Demolition Man, where he gets... Uh, originally, this list was like, we're back, but I couldn't find all the movies that fit. But Demolition Man, he gets a job as a cop, and then he has to defeat uh, Wesley Snipes. But we don't follow Wesley Snipes. We follow Glenn Shaddix to a movie called Tom Cool, about a guy who can't hold down a job, so he eventually gets a job driving around escorts. I think this would be the low point on this list. And I've never heard of this one. Go on. Yeah. But it's a 2009 film called Tom Cool, but we follow Priscilla Barnes to the 1989 film License to Kill, where, as you know, this guy named James Bond Bund um, has a job where he's allowed to kill people. Never heard of this. No. Yeah, no. I don't think he's popular, or this character is popular at all. I like that one, too. That's the one where he shoves Vinicio del Toro into a fucking metal chip or something like that. Or a rock crusher, that's what it is. That's the, uh, yeah, the 89 one with Timothy Dalton, whom we follow to one of my personal favorite movies of the 90s, The Rocketeer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You usually do save your best lists for last. But from The Rocketeer, we follow John Polito 
to the movie where he uh, dies and gets a job as an angel or something. I don't know, but he is the crow. Okay, John Polito, not the crow. Brandon not John Polito. It's the crow. Brandon Lee is the crow. Okay. Yeah, but John the guy, the main character, yeah. dies and he gets a job okay. as a crow. No, that's you know what? Not, you, it's it's not, about a murder and there's crows. Three crows is a murder. Come on. Moving on. Um, but from the crow, we follow one Ernie Hudson to Ghostbusters Afterlife. Okay, I do like this list because it shares a couple movies with my last list. So yeah. Okay, you came through in the clutch, Josh. I was really scared with those first two lists. Let's say a few ones I have not seen. I have never heard of Tom Cool. Uh, I but- don't think that's going to be a good one. But hmm. and at the same time, you guys can't be afraid of shit movies. No, no, no. I'm, not I'm- afraid of shit movies. I embrace shit movies. Wait till we get to my third list. But I look forward to your third list. So speaking of that, Nigel, do you want to present your third list? Well, no. Um, but you're honor but bound and obligated. I am so. honor bound and obligated to do so. And honestly, um, I was so against one of the movies on this list, but um, I was talking to a, a fellow colleague on Star Trek Online the other night who does a movie review YouTube channel. And said that um, sometimes you got to do these movies because your audience loves to listen to you take the piss out of them. So I'm just going to go with that. My third list is called, that's not funny. (laughs) Or you could also call it out of your element because um, the actor or the character they play in the movie is kind of sort of out of their element in this in this list. So from Rocky, we take Stallone to Copland. Mm. From Copland, we take Kathy Moriarty to Kindergarten Cop. (laughs) <laughs> from kindergarten cop we take richard tyson to kingpin oh is that the bill murray uh mm-hmm. man woody harrelson woody harrelson yeah bill murray's yeah. the bad guy woody harrelson and he takes the amish dude oh i loved yeah. that movie growing up kingpin why from, my parents let me watch that go from, ahead from kingpin we take randy quaid to quick change which is a movie i never even heard of until i started doing this list but it's a uh, buddy comedy movie with uh randy quaid and bill murray I've been on mute this whole time, and I've been like, "Ooh, ah, ooh." Uh, I, was about, oh. I, was actually, I was actually getting nervous. I'm about to, I was about to tab back over to Zencaster see if we lost you again. No, no, no. no. I'm so invested in it. I'm like, I didn't even acknowledge that Tom hadn't said anything. <laughs> okay, so from Kindergarten Cop, we take Richard Tyson to Kingpin. From Kingpin, we take Randy Quaid to Quick Change. From Quick Change, we take Bill Murray to. Oh. <laughs> you can say it, Dan. Ghostbusters 2016. No! Dan! No! No! Yes! You promised! Yes! No! No! Audience, I want to point this out, but Dan threatened not to vote for any of my lists if I had one list that had this movie in it. It's because I already had one on there. <laughs> oh, you were supposed to bring balance to the podcast. Oh. And from Ghostbusters 2016, we take Dan Aykroyd or Ernie Hudson, who's ever left, to Ghostbusters Afterlife. Spoiler alert, Josh, you're getting my vote out of spite for this list. Oh, Dude, I kind of well, I wanted to. But I knew you guys would hate me for eternity if I presented it. Because I love the idea of doing Ghostbusters 2016 right before doing another sequel. Yeah, that's kind of why I did this list. Because I thought it would be interesting to have a discussion about it. And I got the inspiration from a friend online who said that he was vehemently against on his YouTube channel of reviewing the Fifty Shades movies. And he ended up reviewing the Fifty Shades movies after everyone in his audience kept asking him to do it. And they ended up going quite viral. So see, audience, if you uh, get on Twitter, you tweet the tweets, you Discord the Discords, and you message the Facebots, and you push for it, we may we may watch Ghostbusters 2016 someday. But as of right now, that's a no-go. It's a no-go. Just no. Pick, we're picking a list next time that has uh, the Hateful Eight and Ghostbusters Afterlife and Gods of Egypt. <laughs> no. At least you have Kindergarten Cop on this list, Dan. Uh, at least you got Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> like I said, Not a bad list, though. I do like that list. Don't know about Quick Change, but... Never even heard of that film until I started doing this list. I've um, seen that film. I'll talk more about it when we start voting on these lists. I've also but... didn't realize until I yesterday when i was finalizing my list that uh the uh movie basically ends with four movies with uh bill murray <laughs> yeah 
It's almost like that one list on the yeah. selection section, six selection sections ago that we lost. You can't find the selection section, but selection section six was the most iconic, the best. amazing selection section ever. Best selection section. The, the gods themselves were jealous and smote it from the internet. Yeah, we recorded that one on Skype. And I think that Microsoft got on there. They listened to it. They cried. And they're like, we cannot release this into the world. This is ours. Bastards. Because we Skype lost it. And that's why we switched to Zencaster. Yes, which uh, with, uh, with the exception of our most recent episode has not let us down. And it wasn't even their fault the last time. It was a series of unfortunate events that not even Zencaster could prepare for. But that's a tragic story for another day. But Nigel, not bad for your third list. We all tend to bring our best for last. And I think it's, unless you have anything else to say about this final list of yours, Dan, I think I'm going to go with my best for last. No, just know that Ghostbusters 2016, I'm doing what's best for the podcast, not what's best for Dan. (laughs) The greater good. Yeah. Well, don't worry, Nigel, because I am going to be taking you all to hell with me which is the name of this list. And you'll know why pretty early on why I named it this. We start off really comfortable, really familiar with Carl Weathers into Predator. And from there, we take Bill Duke into, I think, 2015, 2018, Nick Cage film, Mandy. Do what? I'm voting for Josh. I'm, oh, I, I and, don't even think oh, I've heard of this one. I like to think that I have a good idea of what Nick Cage has came out with in the past 10 years. It has a chainsaw sword fight. He sword 2.3 on IMDb. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just guessing, but I'm probably not wrong. <laughs> oh, you're probably not. But oh, it gets better because then we take Nick Cage himself into the 2021 film Prisoners of the Ghostland. Which I have seen. <laughs> Is that the one that wasn't that terrible? Um, but from Prisoner of the, Prisoners <laughs> of the Ghost Land, we take Nick Cassavetes into Blind Fury, which I think is a, a fighting film about samurai or something like that. I have to look it up again. 80s film. Ninjas, samurai, 80s. And in Blind Fury is Meg Foster, who we take deep, deep underwater in the 1980s underwater horror film, Leviathan. And from Leviathan, we take Ernie Hudson into Ghostbusters Afterlife. I want to say I had a movie with Leviathan on it. We, it's showed up in past lists. I had one. Twice. I had one. It's, I think it's got Peter Weller in it and all that, too. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those films that... um, um. I think came out to VHS around the same time as um, the abyss may have been made around the same time as the abyss, but uh, definitely not the abyss, but the cover looks creepy as hell. Oh, I remember that cover, but yep. This is my number one list three. Well, two Nick Cage films. I can't remember if Blind Fury is a Nick Cage film. I don't think it is. Yeah, also, but I'll be damned, but Mandy has a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Does it really? Oh, shit, it does. It does. Mandy, Nick Cage, 2018, 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, 6 out of 5, or audience. 6 out of 10 on IMDb. That is uh, very high. The audience it's, score is 66%. Yeah, um, I'll give it this much. It's interestingly directed. Um, but I'm, I'm going to save more of my thoughts, the pluses and minuses on that film and Prisoners, Prisoners of the Ghostland when we start parsing these films out, which I think is about right now. Welcome back to another listably listable episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and host of Edited Interspersals, Tom. And thank you for letting us be your hosts as we march right into our 12th selection section of our series and the last selection section of this season. And we now stop to pay respects to the coming end of season two, knowing that where there is life, there must invariably be afterlife. 
Ghostbusters Afterlife, that is, the latest and not yet released inclusion into the Ghostbusters franchise and the canonical third movie in the series. We know what we're going to watch, but we still need to figure out how we're going to get there. And if you want to get there while listening to some fantastic podcasts, or if you want to host a fantastic podcast of your own while waiting for us to release those episodes, why not try out Podbean.com? Podbean is the podcast hosting platform and site, which has been our home for well into two seasons now, and we don't see ourselves going anywhere else for any other seasons as we go. Honestly, we couldn't have asked for a better site. Dan will have more details and such at the end of the episode about Podbean and what they can offer, so be sure to stick around to the end of the episode to find out more. But again, Podbean.com. They've done right by us, I'm sure that they'll do right by you. And as a reminder, if you want people to find out about your products as well, or if you want to find out a little bit more about this podcast, or if you want to find out how to get shouted out in an episode, then feel free to contact Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. That's Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line, as well as the reason for your email. Whether it's to correct us about a past movie, suggest some destinations that we can watch, commission some advertisements for your business, and roll it on over. From there, we'll read it, bury it deep in a spooky graveyard, summon ancient spirits of the dead for answers to what lies beyond the great beyond, and never respond. The only ghost we heard back from kept asking about our car's extended warranty. Not exactly much to write home about. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. And according to my editorial timeline, it's time for me to start wrapping things up. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. Yeah, all three of us have presented our lists. So, you guys just want to go with my third list? Does that call it good? I'm, uh, you know what? Um, the suit offense kicking in. So, yes. <laughs> as long as we don't That's have it to watch tonight's show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still, no, I still think, I still think, even though we're we're leaning towards you, Josh, I still, I still think we should do the show, the due diligence here. Yeah, so. I'm, I, I'm just joking. Okay, but uh, no. So this is the part of the show where everybody gets one vote, and we eliminate one list. Out of each one of our our lists. So then we're going to go down from three lists each to two lists each. And then we're going to do that same process of elimination again to where we each have one list. And then from there, the three of us are going to vote on which of the last three lists we're going to remove. And then from there, we're going to have our two finalists. And those are the ones we're going to vote for the list we want to keep. We'll start at the top with me. And we'll go through, we'll discuss the lists, and we'll say which list we want to get rid of. So I am going to start off, I would say if I was to get rid of one of my lists, I would probably get rid of when someone asks if you're a god. Is that the list you're going to keep, or the one you're going to get rid of? No, this is a... Tom does not listen, does he, Dan? No. No. This is the list, the vote for we want to get rid of. Okay, okay. So So we'll have two remaining lists. Okay, so you're getting rid of that one. Okay. I can see that. Any reason why you're choosing to... I kill- love how they all have a constant theme about dealing with gods, but I'm literally playing on evolution as that's what's keeping my cats and dogs over this one. And I don't really want to watch Cradle of Life. I saw the first Tomb Raider and I hated it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it kept me from ever wanting to watch the sequel. Mm-hmm. But I love Gods of Egypt for all the wrong reasons. And I love Stargate. I mean, the only re- reason I went with that one is because I recently watched it. But I, like I said, I love the theme. But at the same time, if I was to get rid of one of my lists, that would be it. Yeah, Scar- Stargate's Kurt Russell, James Spader, uh, Gods of Egypt's Gerard Butler, and Chadwick Boseman. So, I mean, they got big actors, and we'll get to those movies again. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I was, It was better than the first one because Kurt Russell. 
uh, but the rest, and yeah, I'm I'm with Nigel. Stargate's about the only one that I would really be interested in seeing on this list. The others I haven't seen, so I'd give them the old college try, but I'm not weeping that we're sending this one to the dugout. All right, so that's three votes against that one. <laughs> Unceremoniously. <laughs> You see how I mixed it up this time around? I didn't present my worst list first. Oh, that was your worst list. Because I thought you already did present your worst list first. No, no. I no, I would definitely say his second. second list is his worst one. Yeah. Like, okay. honestly, the only movies not counting the destination that even appeal to me is I do like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It is still to this so day the I. only comic book movie to make me cry. Uh, and, yes. uh, well, no, I, I really, the, the, the last song that, or the song that plays when uh, the funeral, that's, yeah, that hits. That gets me every time. Uh, what song is that? I can't remember. It's cats, or it's um, uh, "Father and Son" by Cat Stevens. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I love that song. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 gets me every single time. So, Guardians of the Galaxy two, I love that movie. Stargate, I love that movie. I love that franchise. And if we ever yeah. did that movie, I would love oh. to talk about like the differences with the TV show and all that stuff. I've never seen anything beyond that first movie, but I love the movie. Yeah, well, I love the whole franchise. Like I said, I love Stargate. I love the, the TV shows. But um, the rest of the list after that, until we get to Afterlife, uh, that's just three weeks of hell that I just don't want to go through. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Well, Get On Up. I was curious about that one. I, mean, I was that's... curious about Get On Up. I mean, it is a Chadwick Boseman film. And um, even if it's a bad film, like 21 Bridges, at least he'd be good in it. We know that much. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said... I. I think he did good as a biographer in uh, 42. I don't know about that one, but it'd be interesting to uh, compare the two. But usually I like to have a banger right before the destination film, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A good, good uh, warm up before the main event. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, I know there's a term for those kind of bands in the music world, but I can't remember. So All if right. you're in music and you want to and you know what it's called when you're the band that goes before the main event, um, let us know. Yeah, we, we don't do that. Although Tom's more into music than most of us, but uh, anywho, for uh, Dan's list, Dan, which one w- of your three would you want to get rid of? Uh, it's actually kind of hard because, I mean, obviously the third one's got Ghostbusters twenty sixteen on it, and I'm just like that'd be a great episode, but oh god, I hate Melissa McCarthy so much. <laughs> In a meta sense, I think that's the one list that Josh would be most interested in seeing. <laughs> What's funny is I think that's my favorite list on his uh, on Dan's. Like, Unlike you guys, I don't think Ghostbusters 2016 is the worst movie ever. I don't think it's a good Ghostbusters movie. It's not a great movie. Like, I saw it twice. More than twice. My kids love it. I don't think it's terrible, but I did like it. I didn't, it's like definitely not like loved it, but it's a movie that I, I don't actively avoid. I just think that it would have been better without Melissa McCarthy and Leslie Jones because they're not funny. They're not funny. Oh, by the way, they're not funny and they shouldn't be in comedies because comedians are usually funny and they're not funny. Dan like, just, you know, laying it out. Sick Dan is almost like angry Dan. I'm just saying. Like, they're just... See, there's a couple of Melissa McCarthy movies that I've liked. Like, The Happy Time Murders. I thought she was pretty good in that one. But that one... No. Netflix movie that came out recently where she was like a superhero. Yeah. That no. was hot garbage. That yeah. was absolutely terrible. She's this. She just makes the same movie over and over and over again. And if we're going to punish Adam Sandler for doing it, we need to punish her too. Okay? <laughs> you should. So, Dan, which list of yours would you uh Well, to be to honest, as much as I hate, hate, hate Ghostbusters 2016, uh, I'm going to have to... I would actually eliminate my second list, only because it doesn't have any kind of a theme to it. I see that. I, I definitely see what you're going with. Yeah. it's. I mean, some of those are pretty solid. Um, distinguished gentlemen I've never seen, nor Same. Commando, and... I weep, I weep every time we have Commando on a list, and I have to watch it go by. But, yeah, I have to agree with you on this one. Um, yeah, that's of your three lists. It's the one that's um, the weakest. See, I would I, I would nix that one for a completely different reason. It's like I said, I've seen all of those movies. It's like you guys have kind of gotten me. I, I've got the uh, fix now where it's like I, I kind of enjoy watching movies I haven't seen. Like I still like peppering in movies that I have I enjoy, but I think back to our uh, Groundhog's Day parade to Punxsutawney. That was our last season on our last journey on season one. Like fantastic list, total banger list. Dan, you did a great job picking that one, but 
we've all seen every single one of those movies. And then I think back to like our most recent list where I don't think I'd seen any one of the movies except for Rocky. And I thought that this last journey, I had a lot, I, I would almost say I had more fun with this last journey than I did with the Groundhog's Day Parade to Punxsutawney, simply because it's like I got to discover something new. So I think that would be the reason I would nix the second one. Yeah, second well, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen The Distinguished Gentleman, and I've never seen Maverick. Mm-hmm. But I've seen uh, I've seen Maverick several times. I love that movie. But I mean, you're right. And honestly, at this point, I'm ready to put Commando as a destination film because it keeps coming up on lists. So we have to keep saying bye bye to it. And yeah. it's like a seminal Arnold movie. Like it, that's the movie that made Arnold Arnold. So mm-hmm. like like the one liners and the the act he's he's walking around with a four barrel rocket launcher and shooting it with one arm because of Schwarzenegger. We'll get, but I'm I'm sure we're going to get to Commando and Predator someday. Those are movies that are just not going to be avoided forever. Yeah, and I in sit fact, here I and listen to my two best friends blathering on about Commando. I almost don't have the heart to tell them that I didn't really care for it. I liked The Running Man better. But that's just a thought for me. I'll let them continue going on and droning on and droning on. <sighs> so anywho, guys, what's the next list? So, uh, so that's the second one we're getting rid of? Yeah, uh, we're getting rid of the second, my second one, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. the, the list with no name. <laughs> Dan had so much confidence in it, he didn't even name it. <laughs> All right, so I guess it's down to me now. To which one? Right. Which one am I sending? Yes. Yes. Honestly, I hate that when we do in a in a rhythm, um, because well, it's a rhythm because you know in the last selection section we all went basically down the list. We killed list one, then we killed list two, and then we kill. It was down to our third list. So it's like this is yeah, fairly. This time we're all killing the middle <laughs> the middle lists. Yeah, and but I'm gonna have to go kill. My middle list, just because technically it's disqualified to begin with. One, because there's only one movie on there I haven't seen. And technically two, because I looked it up, Jan Levy in Evil Dead 2013, they just use his voice. He's not actually in it. Well, so, we used Darth Vader as a connector. Yeah, and we, we used... um. God dang it, the guy to get out of... Uh... Oh, yeah, we used him in Scary Stories, the uh, guy who was basically in the costume. But yeah. Yes, but it's just his voice. It's not. He's not a character. He's not voicing a character. He's not Again, we bodies. used uh, James Earl Jones. He was Darth Vader. True, but he was voicing a character. Either way, it's still only one movie. And honestly, I don't want to see Don't Breathe Again. That was such a bad film. That film was offensively bad. A blind sectagenarian who can like badass whoop everyone's ass just because he used he, he was in like Operation Desert Storm, and just some of the other stuff about that film. Christ on a pogo stick! It was wretched. And they made a sequel to it. God, why? <sighs> I'm I'm disappointed we're not going to see Monster Squad. That's the only thing that breaks my heart about losing this list. We're not going to see Monster Squad, and you guys aren't going to see Manhunter. Those two films alone, I would keep it, but mm, the rest, just not strong enough to carry on to the next round. So, sorry, Terror. You, you just weren't terrific enough. What about your guys' thoughts? Yes. This is what I deal with every selection section. Every. Hey, I don't want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> season one. Yes. You kept presenting list after list after list. <laughs> so obscure movies. I'm just like, are you reading off of a menu or are you talk telling us movies? And um, honestly, I still think you are reading off of a menu. Curse of the Jade Scorpion is a real movie. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you got two two lists picked this journey. Let's not forget that. Two good lists. This and that's true. after you, you put in movies that we knew. Well, so, the last um, one. The last one most of you had didn't know much about them. So I'll take the I, I did get the last journey, and I will still hang my hat on that one very proudly. That was a good list. That was I gotta give you props for one. that one. That was a really great list. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was a great one. And you know, it, it it's okay that you follow this your great list with um 
this. This. All of uh, this. Evil Dead 2013 isn't bad. It's just not the original Evil Dead. <laughs> and Manhunter, we do need to see at some point. Because you do need to see what Michael Mann thought the Hannibal Lecter movie should be. And... It's yes, I am very- curious about that one, but I don't want to see Don't Breathe because I had no interest in it when it came out. No, uh, I, think I don't even think I've ever seen Monster Squad. I don't understand Wait, what you've the never big- see- you've never I know seen- I haven't. No, you neither of you have never seen Monster Squad, the mummy creature from the Black Lagoon, Dracula and Frankenstein versus 80s kids. It's great. Man. I'll be honest. Um, shit. What was the name of that? Uh. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill myself here. Give me a second because I can't think of the goddamn. Not it was one of those uh shit. It was one of those comic strips that ran alongside a penny arcade about the uh, game player versus player. Thank you. Yes, PvP. Like I'll be honest, I remember reading PvP back in the day, and they had a whole story arc about Monster Squad. I thought it was a joke, and I didn't realize it was an actual movie. Yes, it's a very real movie, and it's a very good film. Wowzers. Okay, now I now I want this list to go forward just out of spite. Well, t- Dan and I already nixed it, so, yeah, so you're welcome. No. Oh, beans. Okay, so, but we all agree, list number two, Terror, disqualified from the get-go because I'd only not seen one film on that list. But sorry, Tom Noonan. We'll see each other another day. All right, so now we circle back up to my list? Yes. yes. All right, so I'm going to ask you guys first, and then I'll give my input. Which list of my last two ones would you want to get rid of? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It um, doesn't work for yours, Tom, when you do it. <laughs> your first one. Yeah, I've got to agree with Nigel on this. Yeah, the first one. Doomsday, I saw the first five minutes of, and I that bad? just wretched. Okay, it's, it's I, not- sa- I said it's Mad Max in Scotland, but that actually insults both Mad Max and Scotland. Mm-hmm. I watched the trailer for it and I'm all like, okay, I actually, like there's actually, I've got a shit ton of other, uh, honestly, the movie, I thought, the, I thought doomsday wasn't awful until about halfway through it. And then it just takes a completely different turn and goes into this realm of stupidity and it ruins the whole movie. I've like, it just ruins all of it. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's awful. Yeah. I didn't expect it to be good. No, I, I mean, get that was Car- the thing is like the first two movies. It's like those are the only two movies that I just did. Carter's not fun. good either, but it's that dumb kind of fun. But mm-hmm. Doomsday is just dumb and not fun. So yeah, yeah. but I mean, I, I want to see The Departed. But honestly, I think I can think you can make a case for The Departed being a destination film. Shutter Island. I've always wanted to see that. Never seen it, and uh, I don't even think I remember anything about Evolution. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't want to watch it. Evolution. Oh, Evolution was great. I thought you'd seen it, Nigel. I don't think I have. If I have, I don't remember it. Oh, with David Duchovny and the shampoo. I don't think I've I don't really remember. Make seven up it. yours, guy. What's his Orlando Jones? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you'd Dude, like. I the- loved Evolution. Like I, I'm almost a little disappointed not going with that list because we're not getting Evolution. But mm-hmm. I think the Rocketeer and the Crow will make up for it. I would hope so. All right, so I guess we're all in agreement. Mm-hmm. Cats and dogs living together. Mass hysteria is officially off the list. All right, so Nigel, I uh, think right. I have an idea which one you're going to pick. Well, you guys tell me. This is the round where you guys tell me which one you think you should get rid of. And new listeners, don't go to old episodes expecting this exact same format because we don't remember the, how we did it the last <laughs> time, and we're literally playing it by ear each yeah. time. But for yeah. some reason, the, everyone loves these episodes, so probably because well, we no, don't know no, what no, we're doing. Normally, no, normally at this point, we like say, I want to pick this list to go in for the final round, and we say, no, we would like this list better. But this way is about the same thing. I mean, it's, it's we, we all know which one we want to go forward. That's why we're killing the second list. So, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Go ahead, Nigel. Now that we've got exposition out of the way. Well, I was saying what you guys tell me, what, what of the last two remaining of my list do you want to see get the ax? Oh, um, I would say your third list only because only because of that one quick change in Copland. And again, I'm not counting afterlife. I've seen the rest of them. I love kindergarten cop. I loved Kingpin as a kid, so I don't know if it's going to hold up or not. 
Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But all honesty, I was a little averse to your first list going in uh, when you said it. But if A Mighty Wind and Waiting on Guffman are the movies I'm thinking they are, I would be curious of watching watching those movies because I haven't seen mo- any of them. Yeah. See, for me, I've seen at least half of each list. Um, so I'm honestly preferring to get rid of the first list because I've not seen Copland or Kingpin. I've seen Ghostbusters 2016. I've seen Quick Change, and I think it would be an interesting discussion because it is essentially uh, the Odyssey with Bill Murray and Gina Davis and um, not Dennis Quaid. Randy it's Quaid. Randy Quaid. Let's go back and listen to every episode where we have a Quaid. I cannot. Selection section one. I'm going to give you a small spoiler. Like we were, that was our first pro, or first selection section. You're not going to be able to find it because you got to download Top Gun. Top Gun, we did the selection section and the episode. It's a long episode. It was a long recording session. That's why we decided to split them up in the future. But uh, we each presented two lists but tom presented one list and they fucked that one up because he confused dennis quaid and randy quaid that's not even the best part the best part was he was so confident that was the winning list he's all like i've got it i've got the winner and he's like rubbing his hands and he's all like excited and then he's like running down the movies and then he says and we take dennis quaid to independence day and you and i both almost on point went dennis quaid's not in independence day it's randy quaid and tom's like no <laughs> like he just Oh my god! And what's even funnier is we watch Inner Space, Inner Space on that uh, journey they got picked, and I a couple times Tom said Randy Quaid. It's funny as shit. Tom doesn't know the difference between Randy and Dennis Quaid. <laughs> They're the same people. Very but, much not, but yeah. So of their list, I would pick to go forward. Um, list number three, uh, the list who I would send to the dustbin. Uh, yeah, the first list. You would pick the first one to cut? Yes, I would pick the first one to cut. Even though I I love the guys that do those Mighty Wind and Waiting for Guffman movies, and I've wanted to see both of them for so long. I, and honestly, considering we're going to Ghostbusters Afterlife, I think your third list fits a little bit better than... Or your, your third list fits a little bit better than the first list. That Wow. Uh, this is film. like, have you guys been replaced? I have no, I, I did not expect Tom to be campaigning for the I, list that's got Ghostbusters 2016. I thought I he'd know, be, I thought he'd like, be my like, biggest hurdle. And then you are the one that's saying, no, I'd get rid of the one with Ghostbusters 2016. No, I, no, I'm changing my vote. I want to keep Ghostbusters. I'm going to get rid of your first list. All right, fine. We're getting rid of the first list. <laughs> and <he> is unanimous. <laughs> All right, on to Tom's third. Yes. Or Tom's, uh, Tom's lists. All right, I think. Josh tipped his hand of which one he's going to go with uh, in terms of getting rid of. But um, yeah, so we've got um, I'm Taking You to Hell with Me as list number three and The Horror Sampler as list number one. So guys, which one do you want to cut? Yes. If I could, well, I'll let you guys talk first and I'll start. No, making go cases. ahead because honestly, I'm, honestly, I, I'm, vo- uh, I'm voting on his first list to get to rid of cut to cut. Yeah, I'm voting to cut his first list. Uh, what are your motivations and reasons for cutting it? I have no desire to see half the movies on that list. If they Which, showed up, if just one or two of those movies showed up in a list, that's fine. But the fact that there's like four in a row, uh, no. I just don't want uh, I, whatever happened to baby Jane. No. Now you see him. Now you don't. Not really. Hatefully. No. Amityville, the awakening. Why? Yeah. I just done which horror. I am kind of curious on because I do kind of like those seventies, um, Lovecraftian movies. Um, I know this isn't one of the ones with Vincent price in it, but I have always been curious about those films, but the rest of them just, I don't know. Like if, if whatever happened to baby Jane showed up in one list and it wasn't immediately followed by three more movies that I don't want to see, then it'd be fine. But uh, I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. The first one, I just don't have any inkling to watch more than half the films on that list. Whereas the third film, Predator is a good film. I love it. Mandy looks interesting. I've been looking at it while we've been debating. Uh, Never heard of Prisoners of the Ghostland, but it's Nick Cage, so it's guaranteed to be entertaining. (laughs) That's one thing you can guarantee from... uh... 
from him. But that's it. That that's just my personal reason why I have no desire to see the first one. Sure, sure. And yeah, yeah. you know how I always tell you, Tom, um, pick a list with at least like one gotcha film, and then the movies around it will be mm-hmm. potentially a uh, you know filler type stuff. Like when you did our fire pit strikes out, like you had Rudy in there, and the natural. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Barring our final thoughts on Unnatural, it's like I saw those movies. And I'm like, oh, I can get behind those movies. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut your first list solely okay. because Predator is on your third list. <laughs> I had a suspicion that Predator would be a nice little carrot on the end of a stick. So that doesn't surprise me. I'm going to defend the first list a little bit, but I'm going to cut it anyways. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? I think it would be the horror movie equivalent of, well, not even horror. Well, I guess you could count it as horror. Well, it is a horror. I'm looking at IMDb. Horror thriller. Uh, But I think we would go into it much like we did with The Last Picture Show, because I've not seen all this film. But the, the premise is, a former child star torments her paraplegic sister in their decaying Hollywood mansion. And it is psychological horror. And plus, you've got Betty Davis and Joan Crawford in there. So I think if we did wind up watching it, we would all come out of it much like we did the last picture shows. I didn't know about it, wasn't wanting to see it. Holy hell, are we glad to see it. Um, Tom, not every black and white film we're going to watch, we're going to like. I I honestly think the last picture show was a fluke. (laughs) uh, Well... If I'm not get... that I'm not that hateful or averse to watching a black and white film. I just <laughs> not yeah. wanting to see this list. Uh, and the, the hateful eight, movie. the hateful eight is not Tarantino's worst film. That still Kill Bill Volume Two, but mm. um, it's his second worst. Yeah, I'm not a fan of hateful eight either. And um, now you see him, now you don't. I just I love early Kurt Russell films like The Computer War, Tenor Shoes, The Strongest Man on Earth. You know. Back in his early Disney days, he's wait. Even, is that one? Is that a uh, one of those Disney movies that, uh, like the kids' Disney movies that he made back in the seventies? Yeah, sixties. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you can see prototype Kurt. Oh, nineteen seventy two. Excuse me. Yeah, you can see prototype Kurt Russell in there. Yeah, those are like the you know Disney Channel original movies of the seventies, dude. Yeah, I like those films. It's Kurt Russell, and he is just excellent. He is amazing in those. Seriously. Sure. I promise you. If you agree with me, CC Josh and say, Josh, you're wrong. Tom's right. We'll know what you're talking about. But I'm rambling now. Yeah. List number one goes. The horror sampler just, yep, yeah, gone. All right. Now we're down to our final three. So we're going to vote to which one we're going to cut and send them to the finals. So hmm. Tom's third list in. What's up? Keeping we're Tom's cut, third list, we're, we're going we're to cutting Tom's third list. Tom's third list wins, flawless victory. G- give me a two for it. No, that's that's um okay. We're each going to go. <laughs> let's all talk about the the pros of our lists. I say before we start cutting them. Uh, that way, Dan has a chance to really stand on his soapbox and defend his, and then you, Josh, and then me, and then we can start parsing down. I think once we get to the final two, we will have the whole political rallies, like ladies and gentlemen. And so on and so forth. So, Nigel, why should we not cut your third list? You should start with Josh because the whole thing starts yeah. with him. Okay. I'm sorry, I was not scrolled up enough. Josh, why should we not cut your third list? <laughs> Shush. Tom, you are just you are just a deer. In the headlights. No, it's like I, I would argue for my list because we start off strong with Demolition Man. We do. Like I love that movie back in the day. It still holds up. It's freaking uh, Stallone in his prime. I don't know about Tom Cool, but it's got a really hot Mila Kunis. I've never like, heard of that film, but whatever. But no, Mila Kunis, I think she plays an escort in that film, so I don't know. She's she's hot. Yeah. That, that's, I mean, you just yeah, say Mila hot. Kunis equal hot, and we get yeah. we follow so, that equation. I say, worst case scenario, the movie's terrible, but you get sexy Mila Kunis. I'm sold, so yes. License to Kill, our first Bond film, come on. Come on. And a good one to boot. An underrated one, I might add. And then and then the Rocketeer. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. The Rocketeer. We we know this that's a known quantity, the Rocketeer. Yeah. That was fantastic then, fantastic now. That movie friggin' holds up. It is awesome. Mm-hmm. And then like I said, I've never seen The Crow, but I've heard great things about it, and I'm very anxious to see it. You've never that's... seen The Crow? 
I've never seen The Crow. Oh, that leads oh. even further for me because that's a really good movie. Very mm-hmm. underrated film. Yeah. I might have been slightly averse to it because I was a huge Bruce Lee fan growing up. And knowing that that movie killed his son may have kept me away from it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, that, that probably what kept me from one, uh, subconsciously, I never actively avoided the film, but I never actively pursued it either. So it's like, I was able to build a list with The Crow and The Rocketeer and Demolition Man. Yeah, that's seriously, okay. come on guys. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I follow that. Nigel, what about you? What, what, what are you going to? I have no defense for this list. It has Ghostbusters 2016 on it. <laughs> Your Honor, I've asked to be disbarred for that there incompetence. Yeah, like I, I'm the I'm the giant chicken. I'm the chicken lawyer on uh, Futurama at this point. Your Honor, I move that I be disbarred. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I mean, I think um, I think it's got some movies that would be that are popular enough that. Uh, listeners will enjoy them like kindergarten cop and kingpin copland's a movie i'm curious about because it's a it, it was the movie he made a comeback with um you know it's another one it, it is a movie that kind of shows that stallone can act when he wants to unlike nighthawks yeah but um yeah we haven't seen that one yet though no we haven't seen nighthawks but um but also stallone's surrounded by some really good actors in that movie like ray liotta and harvey keitel you know so yeah, the only thing I know about that movie is he put on like 40 pounds. Yeah, he's not buff ripped Rambo Stallone. And I really do think that it's a, it's just it's just too good of an opportunity to pass up to watch Ghostbusters 2016 as much as I can loathe that movie. Mhm. Going into Ghostbusters Afterlife. And I don't know if I'm going to like Ghostbusters Afterlife or not. I'm not going to judge the film yet based on trailers, but I'm just saying it's it's it would be interesting to talk about Ghostbusters 2016 and how that angered fans of the franchise so much that they basically willed Ghostbusters afterlife into existence. <laughs> Brought it back from the dead. Yeah. And and I want to I want to talk about some of the controversy surrounding that film. Like, you know, how like they kind of basically said that you can't criticize this film because if you do, you're a misogynist and all that stuff. It's like I want to talk about those things, even though they're controversial. Yeah, you know, it's like we could talk about how the movie's a bad film, no matter who's in it. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's a Melissa McCarthy film, so it's going to be awful no matter what. But I honestly, I agree with you on that part. I love the idea of doing the two Ghostbuster sequels back to back. Like mm-hmm. I think what was it? It wasn't last list, but it was like two lists ago when I had the Terminator followed following Terminator. Yeah, or Terminator leading into Terminator Two. Yeah, but mm-hmm. the difference is um, this isn't actually a sequel to 2016 Ghostbusters. No, it's it, not. Yeah, and it's, it's not. But it's a, a good I would love to pair and contrast. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I like the dichotomy of putting them right together. So it's like we get them net one week and then the next. Yeah. So it's like, honestly, I, I like the idea of even going into Ghostbusters 2016. Like if I would have thought that you guys would have uh, even considered it, I might have actually put it on a list. But it's like you guys are so averse to that movie. I'm just like, I'm not going to get ever picked if I put that on uh, the Well, list. I'll be honest with you. I was just doing bait and switch. I already had this list and I was just like, <laughs> I didn't want Tom to have to choose between two that had 2016 Ghostbusters on it. <laughs> Honestly, kind of a lot of my leaning towards it is because it's Dan picking Ghostbusters 2016. It's like but you, you got to understand, Dan has always been the one who's been the most averse to the 2016 Ghostbusters, like mm-hmm. the most. Dude, yeah. I lost you friends on Facebook over that film. I was there. Case in point. So, and having seen it as well, I know how bad it is. And the fact that he's like, no, for the good of the podcast, I will watch this film. Well, that, and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity for that discussion. And honestly, Afterlife, I really hope for, not just for the sake of the Ghostbusters franchise, I just hope for the sake of Ghostbusters itself, for Ghostbusters fans, that Afterlife is at least a decent sequel mm-hmm. to Ghostbusters. Because if, if Afterlife is just as bad, if not worse than 2016, then, oh God. But we'll oh find God. out. We, we will be finding at least that much out. But okay, solid defense on your third list, and sounds like you've got most of the jury on your side too. All right, and as now this is going to be interesting, Tom, defend your third list. Uh, so team, I am going to take refuge in audacity in this. There are two wolves, and they are called Nicolas Cage and Nick Cage. When Nicolas Cage is in a film, you get films like Moonstruck. You get the Rock, where he can act and he gives you an amazing performance. Then there is Nick Cage, 
who is not so much an actor as a thing that a director needs to control. And as we've said in the past, you can tell the worth of a director by how well they can control Nick Cage. Here we have two very stylized movies with Mandy and Prisoners of the Ghost Land. I've seen both of these in theaters, and both times everyone came out of that theater going, this was something. Mandy needs to be watched at least once, not sober. Prisoners of the Ghost Land also needs to be watched, not sober. But different reasons, different ways, it needs to be seen to be believed. At least the directing of Mandy is something. We also get Blind Fury, which is a film starring um, Rutger Howard. The synopsis is, a blind Vietnam vet trained as a sword fighter comes to America and helps to rescue the son of a fellow soldier. So we're talking like really peak mid eight well late eighties like samurai sword fighting schlock that only the eighties can produce. And Leviathan as well, also a nineteen eighty nine sci fi kind of schlock film. I guess still don't rec- when did when did um Abyss come out, by the way? Was it the same time, earlier, later? I thought it was ninety seven. No, Abyss came you're thinking of Armageddon. Okay. The oh, Abyss, yeah. the James Cameron Abyss, film. Yeah, that's eighties. Eighty. No, that's nine. Hold on. Eighties or nineties? Nope, nineteen eighty nine. So actually, we're yeah, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. So again, we have a good. We we have two undersea sci fi films, Abyss and Leviathan. Leviathan goes the horror route with it. So I'm curious to see what this film is because Kid Me always passed it in the rental video rental place in our like uh, our grocery store and the cover oh, yeah. Freak, yeah cover always freaked me out as i've yeah. said in the past when we've talked about this film and i've always been curious to see it just to see would kid me have actually been afraid of this or is it worth the uh let's what's the uh imdb 5.8 it is a 5.8 on imdb so That's how I, I felt about death machine it's only an hour and 38 minutes long too <laughs> I like Death Machine. It's bad, but it's likably bad. So for all of these films, I know Blind Fury and Leviathan stand to be potential what's in the boxes. Mandy and Prisoners of the Ghostland are what's in the boxes for you two. I will get sick pleasure listening to you both react to those films. And plus we start with Predator with Carl Weathers. So that's why I say... Vote. That's why I'm going to defend. I'm taking you to hell with me just so I can get the joy and pleasure of hearing you guys react to Mandy and Prisoners of the Ghost Land, which Prisoners of the Ghost Land is Jesus God, that film. Jesus God. All right. So and, no, that's, this comes- Prisoners of the Ghost Land is essentially uh, Escape from New York, only not. OK. Yeah, there we go. I'm done. You sure? No, but I'll stop anyways. <laughs> Love you, Tom. Love you, Tom. I know I'm not going to win this one, Josh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going quietly into that dark night. All right. So if I had to vote for one to kick, I would probably, probably Tom's third list. Nigel? I would kick uh, my list. Because I hate Ghostbusters. So <laughs> <stuff like that. laughs> uh, Shamalong uh, long twist. Uh, no. Everybody saw coming. No, honestly, again, I got to go back to defending my list by eliminating Tom's because I still think the opportunity for the discussion of the compare and contrast between Ghostbusters 2016 and Ghostbusters Afterlife and a discussion on the Ghostbusters franchise as a whole, it's just too good of an opportunity to pass up. So, because we really don't know if Afterlife is not successful, do we ever get another sequel to Ghostbusters? So that's why I have to vote to eliminate Tom's third list. Uh, <clears throat> if you hadn't picked Ghostbusters 2016, Nigel, if it was Josh's list and not yours that had Ghostbusters 2016, I would be voting against it, you know, from hell's heart stabbing at thee. But the fact that 
you. Only Nixon could go to China and only Dan can pick Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> yeah. I never would a Ghostbusters list make it this far in a selection section episode unless Dan's the one who I, picked it. I mean, you're right. You're right. You're right. It'd be like Tom picking episode one, The Phantom Menace, for on a list. Like, it, yeah, it's so... Or, you know, or even if Tom picked one of the new trilogy movies, like The Last Jedi or something on, on a list, like, you'd be like, oh my god, you know, but yeah, you're you're right. Trust me, guys, I was like, Dan, are you really doing this? When I was coming up with that, that third list, when I was like, are you really doing this, Dan? Are you really, oh my god, you're doing this. Just stick your dick in the hole. Just Yeah, just do it. Ignore what's on the other end. <laughs> you're not going to like what you get, Dan, but... Uh, well, he'll like it, and it's in the episode, he just doesn't want to know. I mean... I'm still going to take a pot shot at Josh's list and say I want to get rid of that. Out of spite, you you guys are right for getting rid of my list because after the the very good showing uh, with uh, Marathon to Pound Town and how I basically took home the gold in all categories, more or less. No, silver because of Untouchables. I got silver in that one. Dan, every- he just wants to make sure that the list with Ghostbusters didn't have any strikes against it because he really wants that list. I'm. We haven't got to that point yet, Josh. Well, no, because because are you voting for my list then? Because if you're, you're saying it's coming off like you're voting for my against to vote my list off, which would mean that two votes for your list, which obviously means that we're cutting your list, one vote for my list, and no votes against. The Ghostbusters 2016 list. But see, this is why I make what I want you to think. See, Dan, yeah. I'm playing mind games with him. At some point, I am going to get a list with Mandy and or Prisoners of the Ghost Land because you both do need to see those films to see Nick Cage be Nick Cage. I'm going to vote against your list three, Josh, just to spite you, even though I know I'm going to lose. <laughs> okay. <It's- sighs> I love these episodes. (laughs) So long. So we're down to the finals. So long, list three. I'll see you in hell. Comes down to Tom. Dan, I hate to say that your uh, Ghostbusters 2016 list is defined by your penultimate movie in that list, but that's your Ghostbusters 2016 list. And uh, if there's a steady paycheck in it, you guys know what my vote's for. My list. Dan? (laughs) Oh God! Why do you guys always Dan do this? Sleep. Why do you always leave it to me to do this? Especially, I'm when... going down the list. Oh. Yeah, you, I gave you my got vote. the second list, so you pick. You can vote for your list. You can vote for Josh's list. Oh yeah, I'm... that's right. Tom's the deciding factor, but I don't <laughs> want Tom to choose my list because it's got Ghostbusters 2016 and pissed off Josh. So would I we'll... be so spiteful? Absolutely, what? absolutely, absolutely. You would. You would. And I'm too sick to. <laughs> men fences here so see that bottle that you hear him opening and closing that is not um like mountain dew or whatever that's cough medicine he's been chugging that like it's you know mucinex mucus in yeah. and out or whatever <laughs> i don't know how the slogan goes i'm tired uh, he's been chugging it like like it's it's a beer <laughs> <sighs> uh, i mean if it's if i'm gonna no i'm gonna just stand back and let dan pick this i know which one i'm gonna go for so honestly i'm gonna i think that our season finale uh, journeys should always go out on a bang mm-hmm. kind of like we did with the uh parade to punxsutawney mm-hmm. for groundhog's day mm-hmm. how we went with a list that just had you know banger film after banger film after banger film and i'm gonna have to side with josh's list because outside of tom cool which i've never heard but whatever it's got some pretty solid movies on that list Mm-hmm. And I've never seen Tom Cool, and I've never seen Ghostbusters Afterlife, obviously, but I've seen the other movies on that list. But two of them, The Rocketeer and The Crow, I have not seen in a long fucking time. Mm-hmm. That sounds like you're leaning towards a uh, um, steady paycheck. Yeah, I think I'm going to lean towards steady paycheck. And like Josh said a couple months back, he hasn't had a list in a while. And I think as much as I would like to do the discussion between Ghostbusters 2016 and Afterlife, uh. I'm going to have to lean towards Josh. And from my end, yeah, I spat on the list, Josh, because I knew I was going to vote for it. <laughs> you you tend to do very well when you have a what's in the box film. And Tom Cool definitely stands out as a what's in the box. So 
I'm going to make it unanimous. As much as I would love to also have that discussion between Ghostbusters 2016 and Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, yeah, I got to... I, I'm, I'm curious about Tom Cool. I really I, am. I am too. I'm curious about it too. And like I said, it's just, it's, it's our last journey of the season and, and those are some pretty banging films. So mm-hmm. I think Was it'll it? be, I think it'll be a really good season finale. Yeah, plus, I won. <laughs> plus I Even though it's technically not winning, but no, also think about it this way too. What I absolutely love about this whole thing is um, even though it's been forever, because since I've had a list picked, Look at how the symmetry of our lists have been picked. The first three uh, journeys of the season, and Jesus Christ, we're on the sixth journey of season two. Um, I got my list picked. Tom got the second one. Dan got the third one. And then it just flipped. Dan got the fourth one. Tom got the fifth one. And I got the sixth one. Mm-hmm. So it's it's per- almost perfect symmetry because we started the journey or the season with a Ghostbuster sequel and we're ending the season with a Ghostbuster sequel. Both, and uh, not just that too, but the final episode of season one was Groundhog's Day starring Bill Murray. Final episode of season two will also star Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of symmetry involved in that. I think um, uh, Lucas had something to say about that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's a circle or something like that. He was drunk with power, though, so maybe we shouldn't be quoting him in this scenario. What is it? It's like poetry, it rhymes. That's something that they always say on Reddit whenever somebody tries to com- make comparisons in any kind of Star Wars. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, so congratulations, Josh. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you both for not making me watch Mandy and um, Ghostland again, because I didn't want to watch those films again. <laughs> They're terrible. The truth comes out when the final list is picked. Whew. Now I'm excited. We get to watch Demolition Man next week. I actually am kind of excited about that same, one. Same here. I'm excited to see them. Like I said, I almost, I'm, I'm almost picking against your list out of spite because it, it does feature a lot of movies I've already seen. But uh, I don't know. I just kind of, it's Sometimes been a stressful. Gotta... The, the, the last journey, not the outside of the podcast. Like the, the podcast was fine, but out, life outside the podcast was very stressful. So I'm kind of looking forward for the next like six weeks, at the very least, the next five weeks. If assuming I don't like Tom Cool, the next five weeks will be pretty decent movie watching nights. All right. So future Josh here and Dan and future Tom. Um, so after a little bit of research, after picking, you know, my list. I discovered that the movie Tom Cool, while IMDb still has it on there and says it was released in 2009, it was never actually released. So watching that film will be nearly impossible. So um, we have elected to watch a much better film, Maniac Cop 3. A classic. <laughs> the classic. Classic. Everyone knows Maniac Cop 3. Why are we telling them about this film? I know. This is like blockbuster level. This should have been a destination episode. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so Tom cool no more. Tom's not cool. My mom says I'm cool. I'm sure she does. She said you were tool. Tool. Yeah. Maniac Cop 3, awesome. So in disclaimer. So it's a lot of movies I haven't seen, like License to Kill and the Crow. Like on I that want list... you to see the Crow. I really want you to see the Crow. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't. Oh and my god! I want to see License to Kill again. I just recently went on a James Bond kind of mini marathon, and I didn't go to this. I didn't watch this one because uh, my mini marathon I only watched one movie from each James Bond actor. So yeah. um, I've actually never seen all of License to Kill. So that's it's a good something one. that's kind of ironic. Like it's funny. It's like. Some of your lists, I've seen all those movies, but I was worried about that one, picking License to Come. I I remember even thinking, it's like, Dan Dan has seen this one. So I was averse to picking that one. It's a good one, though. I like the two Timothy Dalton James Mm -hmm. Bond movies. I think they're very underrated James Bond films. But anywho, I think we need to... uh, Name this list. What are we going to name this journey? I recommended Descent into the Afterlife. Mm, Descent? And I went with the... uh, I liked the... Uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man March to the Afterlife, or just the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man March. We've we've used March before. No, we haven't. Yes, we, have. we haven't. No, we haven't, because we were going to use it we've as used a, parade. the March to Independence Day. We've used Parade, and we used Marathon. Remember, my original idea for the Marathon to Poundtown was the March to Poundtown, but Dan came up with the Marathon. 
and that's what we changed it to. We've never used March. Okay, okay. So March is definitely going to be part of it. I don't know. I don't really dig the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. That's going to be S S Say S P Mem. That's just so many letters. Well, well Stay Puffed you could keep as one, but you could go. It's the S three M or S M three. Stay Puff Marshmallow Man March. I think we could do better than Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. I do like March. March to the Afterlife, something along those lines. See, I liked the Marshmallow Man March because it was very whimsical, and I love the whimsical names. Like, I love your name, Dan, but it almost feels too serious. Oh, no, no, we're always serious, Josh. Josh, Josh, we're always serious on this podcast. We have never used a gag name for a journey whatsoever, he said, having just come out of Marathon to Pound Town. <laughs> But I, I get it. it's like normally you guys get to like whoever's list gets picked. The other two kind of have most uh, input on the name. So right now we're leaning towards Marshmallow Man March to the Afterlife. Um, still not 100 percent sure because I don't know how much the Marshmallow Man is going to be featured in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, okay, so I'm still stuck on Marshmallow Man. I think we could do better, but. I can't think of anything better. And so, yeah, Marshmallow Man March to the Afterlife. I think that would be the journey title. Nigel, sound groovy? Uh, Do we want to, like, yeah, I can't I like- think of anything at the moment. I, I, I pitched, like I said, Descent to Afterlife not too long ago, but. The, was it Into the Afterlife or, in, or To the Afterlife? Des- I thought yours was Into. Either or. Uh, March I just, in- I used Descent because it's one we hadn't used before. So, Marshmallow Man March into the Afterlife. Josh, you had additional thoughts, comments? Well, I'm just thinking the uh, abbreviation could be M3N2A. That's very com- convoluted. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like uh, Mentua. <laughs> Men- Mentua. Mensa. This is, that's the name. <laughs> it's Mensa. Okay, now I am so just welcome to Mensa Journey. Which this actually is... kind of plays into the fact that all the Ghostbusters are scientists. Yeah. So it's Mensa March. <laughs> okay, okay, now I'm on board with this. Marshmallow Man March into the Afterlife. Or Mensa. <laughs> uh, well done, sirs. Well done. I also have an idea of how you should record the movies or the uh, the not the hype section, the the rundown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, what you got? Remember in the first Ghostbusters movie, their commercial. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, so like, so like, like where this is going. Yeah. So like, for example, it's like, do you believe in Demolition Man via Glenn Shaddix to Tom Cool? And then someone else, and then do you believe in Priscilla Barnes to License to Kill or Timothy Dalton to The Rocketeer? Do you believe John? Are you Pol- troubled? By- yeah. Are you troubled by John Polito in the Crow or Ernie Hudson yeah, yeah, in yeah, Ghostbusters yeah, yeah. Afterlife? And at the end of the thing, you say we're ready to believe you. Yeah, I'm pulling up the skirt. I'm pulling up the commercial so we can get the dialogue. But yes, yes, I'm absolutely. I can hear this in my head. This may have come to me in a fever dream last night. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Are you troubled by a strange Sylvester Stallone in Demolition Man in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of Grandel Bush in Maniac Cop 3 in your basement? Or Robert Davi in License to Kill in your attic? Have you or your family ever seen a spook, Spectre, or Timothy Dalton in The Rocketeer? If you've ever followed Joe Polito into The Crow, then don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call the professionals. Ernie Hudson in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Our courteous and efficient staff is on call 24 hours a day to serve all your supernatural elimination needs. We're ready to believe you. This is it. The final chapter of Season 2 of The Fire Pit. The Marshmallow Man March to the Afterlife. Step on through to the other side at firepitpodcast.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh take you towards the podcast's final and inevitable resting place. Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's spooks, specters, ghosts, and it's here every Tuesday at the Fire Pit. We're ready to believe you. All right, well, um, yay, my list was picked. Finally. Is this what Tom feels like in season one? <laughs> yes. But uh, that does it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us at our amazing URL, 
www.firepitpodcast.com. Yeah. There you'll find links to Spotify, iTunes, Amazon. Really, if you want to listen to our podcast, we've got options. Our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m. And we always appreciate it if you like and subscribe, uh, whatever medium you choose. And please leave a review. Um, if you do, we'll definitely read it on the podcast. So it helps with the search metrics. So we'll show up to all our new listeners out there. Thank you for uh, listening. If you followed us on Podbean, we appreciate that. You can even follow us on other platforms, but more on that, Nigel. This podcast is sponsored by Podbean. Podbean is the easiest way to create your own podcast. We use Podbean to host the Fire Pit Podcast. Download the free Podbean podcast app to start, record, and publish your very own podcast in minutes. Podbean provides everything you need to run your podcast, and you can record and publish episodes directly from the app, from the app on your phone. Download the free Podbean app today again. That's P O D B E A N. Podbean. Head on over to Podbean at www.podbean.com and use the code PODCAST21 for your first 30 days of podcast hosting for free. Check it out. It's a great service. We can't say enough good about it. And getting the thir- first 30 days free is great. And be sure to join our Discord channel as well. Link link can be found in the episode's description at discord.me slash firepit. You can also email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That the sexy, very attractive fellow in the interspersal talks about. Also, be sure to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE, both linked in this episode's description as well. And I would like to shout out our listeners, not just the new ones that came on since we've been featured on Podbean, but also our past listeners, because we hit, the Fire Pit podcast has hit an awesome milestone this week. Honestly, the day we're recording this, it hit the spot milestone. But we have officially hit 3,000 downloads. Big 3,000. Nicely done. So big shout out to our listeners. You guys have made this possible by listening to us and giving us this soapbox to bitch about movies and talk about good ones. So thank you. I mean, if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing this. We definitely wouldn't like doing it as much. So we appreciate all of our listening patronage. We hope you enjoy this episode and all of our episodes to come because we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Now we're a featured podcast. We are a featured podcast. I don't know if you know, but we're famous now. Featured podcast. might have heard of us. And I'd like to shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Uh, As always, thank you for your continued support and listening. And uh, I'd also like to shout out two more friends of the channel, uh, Danielle and Matt. Uh, They guest starred on our Destination episode, Rocky, last week. Uh, And uh, we had some technical difficulties, but we got through it. And they really enjoyed themselves, enjoyed watching the movie with us. So we'll have them on again here soon. And uh, so a special shout out to them. And also a special shout out to Zencaster, our recording platform for the podcast. Well, I mean... Selection section episodes are the whole reason we use Zencaster because our last recording platform lost it. The best selection section episode ever. Uh, that's why we use Zencaster. So special shout out to them. They are not paying us to talk nice about them and we don't pay them for the service, but we just can't help but uh, give them a shout out. Zencaster too. I, I wanted to add in, they, um, they, they've retweeted a bunch of our episode, uh, tweets so Do oh they, they have yeah, I, I should have mentioned that too i noticed that the other day every time we use real? the hat yeah every time we use the hash hashtag made with zencast or something like that uh they retweet it no yeah, like not every time but they have done it several times in the past yeah. so shout out to zencaster for doing that too wow looking out for us like they look out for us yeah, uh, yeah i mean like we, i know podbean's getting a lot of uh a lot of their time from us because you know they help feature us, but I mean Zencaster is right there helping out too. I mean, yeah, and who's to know that some of these new listeners didn't come in from the Zencaster retweet? So, yeah, so wow, good guy Zencaster being a good guy, wowzers. And from my side, I would like to shout out one of our Facebook followers, Lips with two P's. Lips is one of the hundreds and growing followers on Facebook who tune in every week every day, every month, or whenever they feel like just to see what we're doing, see when we post episodes, uh, see if we have anything new going on, old going on. Just, you know, whether you're listening to us actively or you're just like to have us on your favorites feed, we appreciate it. Also, I would like to shout out one of our latest 
Podbean followers, Alfie. Alfie also joins the many individuals who have liked and are following us now on Podbean. Thank you all very much, whether it's Facebook, Podbean, or if you're somewhere else out there on, say, Apple iTunes or anywhere else, just thank you so very much. We appreciate it, and thank you for helping to keep the fire pits burning. All right, guys. Well, I guess we are going to a uh, construction yard next week, right? Um, I, Yeah, I think we need to wear our hard hats. We're about to take tear down this building here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're going to be the demolition men. I can be the guy that uses the dynamite plunger. Yeah, but we got to watch what you're saying, Dan, so no catchphrases. Anyone find my seashells anywhere? I know I had three seashells somewhere around here. Oh, Maybe I, left I didn't know how they were looked, so I pooped on them. Oh, it's a good thing I left them behind a Taco Bell, then. No one will know the difference. I'm waiting for Dan to say the catchphrase. For fuck's sake, you two. You have just been fined two credits from oh. something I don't remember the line. <laughs> oh, for a violation of the ver- verbal morality ver- statute. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you've been fined two credits for a violation of the verbal morality statute. We'll have it together by the episode, guys, we promise. <laughs> Until then, I've been Josh. I've been Dan. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there.